this is going on 48 hours. 48 hours. Uh, it happened around the 49 mile marker on I-75. The search for Joseph Couch of Woodbine remains. We would like to thank our uh, partners uh, with the FBI, the ATF, local law enforcement, Fish and Wildlife, um, the Forestry Service, and London City Police and the Laurel County Sheriff's Department. This manhunt has become a, a methodical effort, uh, similar like a hide and seek. We're focused on protecting the residents and their homes and the businesses during this critical time. Our goal is to apply steady pressure and wearing Mr. Couch down. Uh, the longer he is in the woods, you know, late, last night it had got pretty chilly, and today it's got kind of humid and hot. Uh, hopefully he has no water and nothing to eat, and just time that we will wear him down and putting pressure on him with constant steady uh, air, air, our helicopters flying over, drones flying over, uh, dogs, SRT in, in, the, uh, in the woods looking, um, cars running up down the interstate, just things like that is putting pressure on him. And, and hopefully he's, he'll eventually just walk out of the woods and give himself up. That's what we hope will happen in this scenario. So people, you know, ask, why aren't we just going in there? You know, if you've followed my Facebook in the last hour or so, we have gave you a photograph of the area. It's not like going over to this business and looking for somebody in there. It's not like going to a football field and trying to find somebody behind the bleachers. We are in the Daniel Bune National Forest. And this is thousands and thousands of acres. And I stated last night, it's kind of like a jungle. Well, it is like a jungle. And we have cliff beds, we have sinkholes, we have caves, we have culverts that go under the interstate. We have reek, uh, creeks and rivers uh, and the dense brush. I mean, it's not something I can just take my dog for a natural walk through. Yes, there are paths, but when we're looking for somebody, we have to go through those dense areas. We have to, we got to go and make sure no rock is unturned to find not just him, but to find evidence. And when you do these things with all the people involved, you've got to have communication. So there's not a direct line at when you first get there, even maybe the first day that the FBI can talk to the state police, the state police can talk to the sheriff's department. We have to tie those networks together and go out and do grid searches. Find certain areas that you're going to go and not track in behind each other. And also, you got to know who's to your left and to your right and, and make sure they're safe. And uh, you go very slowly because not just you're looking for him, you're looking for evidence. You know, he's been in the military. Just because you're in the military don't mean you're, you know, a professional um, survivalist. Um, talking about maybe wearing him down, you know, that's, that's what, it don't matter if you are a survivalist. If you're out there without water and food, you know, how long can you really survive? And um, you know, we hope he just walks out, you know, gives up. And, you know, we didn't talk about this last night. There is people that are hurt. There is people that are injured. But at this time, nobody has died. And let's not make this, if, if he does have social media, if he does have a family out there that cares for him, you know, turn yourself in. Don't make this worse than what it is. You know, just give up and, and make this, make our community get back to, to what it is, you know.